In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how you can get a bachelor's of science education in as little as one year. And this is gonna be done by using something known as competency-based education. Now, there are a few universities that are regionally accredited, respected, and the one that I'm gonna be talking about in this video is a top 10% university. This is just an example. You can use the other ones, but that is going to be WGU or Western Governors University. And I know this is hard to believe that you can get an entire bachelor's degree in as little as one year, but there are tons of testimonials on YouTube, Google, Reddit, etc., of people that have done this exact process. And I'm going to share that exact process, the strategies and the tactics step by step in this video. I'm going to break it down so that it is ridiculously easy for you to understand. And this could very likely save you three to four years of time, $100,000 in student loans, endless amounts of headache, as well as a bunch of opportunity cost, right? Because during the same time where your friends who decided to go to traditional university are still in college, accumulating debt, you are going to be actually making money in your job. So if you appreciate me dropping this insane value bomb, go ahead, gently tap that like button, and let's jump right into the video now. All right, so this is a very simple four-step process, but you do have to follow each step exactly as I say it. So don't skip ahead or anything like that. Keep this open in your tab if you have to. And the very first step is you're gonna go ahead and transfer in your existing credits. Now, this sounds simple enough, but the truth is a lot of universities out there don't like to accept very many credits. So for instance, I've seen universities where they will only accept AP exams that you took during high school if you scored a perfect five. And if you're familiar with AP exams, it's very difficult to score five. Most people are gonna score like a three or a four. WGU, on the other hand, and many of the other competency-based universities are extremely gracious about the units that they accept. Not only do they accept the usual stuff like AP and IB exams, as well as credit that you have from other universities you might have attended, but on top of that, they also accept things like certificates and certifications, Udemy classes, other credits from third-party companies, CLEP exams, and in some cases, they will accept even military or work experience. So make sure you get all of your experience, your transcript, your resume, everything together, send it into your counselor at WGU. They're gonna tell you what you can test out of. And at that point, they will send you back a list of classes that you still have to take. And at this point, you are gonna move on to step number two. This is the most important step. And that is you are going to use third-party companies to test out of many of the remaining classes. Now, there are several different BS of science education degrees. This particular one is designed to help you teach middle schoolers. So this is for the middle grades. And you are gonna to have to take about 40 total classes to get your bachelor's. Great. Now, using the third-party companies I'm about to talk about, even if you're super busy, even if you have a family, a full-time job, et cetera, you can still very comfortably test out of one class per week. And if you do the math there, 40 courses, one class per week, within just a few months, you can test out of a significant amount of classes. Now, if you're not super busy, I've seen some of my students, my consulting clients, test out of one class per day, sometimes even more than that. And if you follow this method exactly as I say, you can actually test out of 18 of the 22 total classes before you even enroll at WGU. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Now, I do have a cheat sheet, which I will put down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below that makes this entire process ridiculously easy because you do have to do the research to make sure you're taking the right class at study.com with the class at WGU. And also there are alternative platforms you can use other third party companies. My favorite one is study.com. My second favorite one is sophia.org. My third favorite one is straighter line. At this point, the time of recording this video, I've only filled in the study.com classes, but in the future I may do the sophia.org classes as well. So yeah, definitely check that out. I made the whole process ridiculously easy. All you have to do is just click on it. It'll take you to the exact class that maps up with the WGU class. Simply enough. Now, once you have tested out of all the classes that you possibly can using study.com or one of the other third-party companies, you're gonna go ahead and move on to step number three, which is you are going to pre-study the remaining classes. Now, this is a step where a lot of people skip it, and I've seen this cost people thousands of dollars. So do not skip this step. And the reason for that is because you are aiming to graduate from WGU as fast as you possibly can. 
And the reason you want to do that is because at WGU and other competency-based universities, you pay per term. Each term at WGU is six months, and you're going to pay somewhere between $3,500 to $4,000 per term, depending on the degree you're going for. So for instance, if your goal is to graduate in three terms, which would be a year and a half, you want to make sure you have a good plan going in and you can do that easily. You don't want to be in a situation where you are coming up on the end of a term and you still have a bunch of classes you have to take and then you try to cram all of them in and then you end up having to enroll in another term and you're only enrolled for like a week or a month but you end up paying the full amount right so you don't want to end up in a situation like that and i have seen that before and this is why you want to pre-study the classes before you enroll now there are two resources that are phenomenal that will basically take care of all of your needs when it comes to pre-studying the classes and those two resources are one the wgu subreddits and two the wgu facebook groups now typically for the wgu subreddit there is a main one and then there's typically going to also be one for the exact degree that you are taking so you definitely want to spend time on those subreddits as well as the facebook groups because they are going to be sharing tips tricks strategies tactics etc to pass the classes as fast as you possibly can so for instance, maybe they're gonna share with you a really good free resource they found on YouTube or Google or Khan Academy that's gonna help you pass that class as fast as you possibly can. And they'll also share tips and tricks on the types of questions that are gonna pop up on the final exam. Now, on top of that, just generally speaking, uh, Khan Academy is really great. Um, you can get free or very cheap textbooks online. You can also order a physical textbook if you'd like. Sometimes Udemy has some really good courses you can take depending on the class. But yeah, definitely leverage those resources. And once you feel confident, go ahead, move on to the last step, step number four, which is you are going to enroll in WGU and knock out the remaining classes as fast as you possibly can. So this step is relatively straightforward. Make sure that you leverage your mentor and your professor, especially for some of the harder classes they can probably help you out. You know, something like the preclinical experiences in science and hereditary and genetics. Those are gonna be some of the harder classes and your professor can definitely help you with that. And then of course, also make sure to use the Facebook group and the subreddit. And sometimes it's a good idea to look up the classes by the class number, which again, that is in the sheet, in the pinned comment, in the description down below. And I'm gonna be going over that in just a second. So just to summarize the overall strategy, first step, transfer in all your existing credits. Second step, knock out as many classes as you can using third-party companies. Third step, pre-study the remaining classes. And fourth step, go ahead and roll in WGU and knock out the remaining classes as fast as you possibly can. Now let's go ahead, jump into the cheat sheet down below, and we're gonna go over this process step by step. All right, so we are now in the cheat sheet, and I'm just gonna go over how you can use this really quickly. But this far column over here, um, I was talking about the class number, like C455. Oftentimes on the WGU subreddit and the Facebook group, people will actually refer to the class by this number. So you wanna go ahead and, you know, if you're searching for a class, go ahead and type this number into the search function on the WGU subreddits or the Facebook group, and you can sort of like look at the conversations that people have already had with those numbers. The second column right here is gonna be the name of the class at WGU. The third column is the amount of units in each class. This fourth column here is the most important one, and these are the classes at study.com that you can use to transfer in to WGU. So just to be very clear on this, if you take this row right here, English 104, which is study.com class 0057, again, they might refer to the study.com classes like that on the Reddit and the Facebook groups. So they might say SDCM0057 or something along those lines. If you take this class at study.com, it will transfer in for English Composition 1 at WGU. Now, another thing that I did here, again, this is just preliminary. I may update this in the future. If study.com did not have the class, I went ahead and looked at sophia.org and straighterline.com. In this particular case, general physics is offered at straighterline.com, but at this time, it's not offered at study.com. In the future, if they do offer some of these classes, I will try to keep this sheet up to date. And I may also fill in sophia.org because I've gotten a few requests for that. In the meantime, by the way, if you want to save 30% off your first three months with study.com, you can use the code Shane Hummus during checkout. So they were nice enough to give me a discount code. And it also helps the channel out a little bit if you use it as well. So I would appreciate that. Now, another thing I will quickly mention is the category of the class, just very generally speaking, the green ones are relatively easy. 
the yellow ones are medium difficulty and the red ones are going to be harder but that is generally speaking and there are a ton of exceptions now one more thing uh, if you want to follow this process step by step just go ahead go file make a copy and you will be able to edit all of this and you know you can tailor it to your specific situation these tabs down here I basically just go over an example but you can just edit those tabs and uh, tailor it to your specific situation but the one downside to making a copy is if I update this sheet in the future, you will not have access to that. It won't update on the copy. So you might want to check the original sheet from time to time as well. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and go through the four steps. So first step is you want to transfer in your existing credits. And of course, this is just an example. So for instance, let's say uh, you took AP biology during high school and AP math. So you're able to transfer those two in. And then on top of that, you took one semester at a traditional university before deciding it wasn't for you, but you did take some classes and pass them. And so you had communications, art, astronomy, as well as education, and you were able to finish those and get credit for them. So you transferred all of those in. At this point, you would want to move on to step number two, which is the test out phase. You're gonna go ahead and test out of as many classes as you possibly can using study.com. And in in this particular case, straighterline.com as well. So once you tested out of those classes and you transferred them in, you would go ahead and move on to phase number three, which is you would pre-study the remaining classes. And like I said before, there is, I believe, 22 classes remaining. So you were able to test out of 18 classes before you even started at WGU. So at this point, you would pre-study these classes. And like I said before, a lot of people skip this step and uh, it's just not a good idea. I understand if you're very busy, what I would recommend is, you know, especially if you have a good plan, you kind of know approximately how long it's gonna take you, go ahead and just study some of the more difficult classes because those are the ones that generally speaking are gonna take you longer. So you can go ahead and just pre-study those if you're super busy and you kind of feel like you know you have a good plan and you're gonna be able to finish it within those terms. But you gotta be careful here because I've seen it over and over again where people end up spending an extra term and they spend a bunch of extra money because they don't do the pre-study step. So once you're done pre-studying, you feel confident that you will have a good plan and you're gonna be able to finish within, you know, maybe your goal is two terms, for instance, which is totally possible. Then you're gonna go ahead and roll in WGU and knock out the remaining classes as fast as possible. And that is step number four. Once you do that, you're gonna go ahead, move on to step number five, and that is brag to all of your friends and family that you are able to graduate with a legit bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited top 10% university in one year. Everyone's gonna think you're a genius, but if you're nice, you will go ahead, share this video with them so that they can do the same for themselves. Now, one thing I always do want to mention at the end of these videos is WGU is a great option for so many people out there, but it does have its cons, right? There's no option out there that has only pros and no cons. Nothing in life is like that. So for instance, WGU does have a relatively weak network because it's all remote. You know, it's remote, it's flexible, you can just do it in your free time. You don't have to move across the country. You don't have to quit your job in order to go to school. But the downside to that is you're probably not gonna get as much networking experience as you would if you went to a physical brick and mortar university. And then on top of that, there are some other good options for competency-based universities. Uh, UMPI is really good. SNHU is accelerated. There's also Thomas Edison State University. That's a really good one too. And I do talk about the pros and cons of WGU as well as some of the other universities that might be a better option for you in this video right here. So make sure you check that out.